Uh, sorry to disturb you the question, sir. So I, I, I try to run it quickly because I want to leave some time for demo, although I'm not sure whether it's working or not. So, okay, so this, uh, today's topic is about clap detection, uh, the clapping sound detec detection using uh, Arduino and a neural network. Usually, neural network, we are talking about neural network is usually for big machines and a big high pro processing power, but I'm trying to do this in Arduino and show that it's actually doable. So, uh, the motivation is I need a remote control light simply because I forget to allocate a light switch at my room. So I, I want to do some remedy of this mistake, so I'm trying to do some uh, remote control of the light. And uh, there are several of the options to, for me. One is the PIS sensor. This is very obvious. Uh, some kind of uh, passive inf infrared detection when you walk, walk nearby, then it starts to activate. Um, and, but for this time, it's not really applicable to my application because the sensor has to be mounted on a wall that against the person where, who is uh, working. And the sensor has, actually has an angle of detection. So that if I walk behind, it actually it doesn't activate at all. So PIR sensor rule out. And there's a new type of sensor called micro radar. It's a very fancy name. But I bought several of these sensors. And it's supposed to be have a 360 degree detection. But what I found is actually, because my, inside the wall there's some of metal, metal structures that actually block the signal, so it, it's not working as, as well. So the only option for me is sound. And the, actually there's something kind of, some, something like a production sound detector with switch built in and it's a nice panel that you can just replace your uh, uh, ordinary switch, but I feel like it could be quite simple why I cannot do this my own. So. So I have so many Arduino lying around, so I just make this one <laughs> particular simple schematic, just one microphone with some amplifier feed into a, a analog input and do some detection. I think hey, that's quite simple. Then maybe I, I go to Google and I search for some of the existing pro projects that people are publishing. So there's a ton of those things. So what, what you actually see, what, what they did is uh, they just, in the loop function, what they did just uh, read the analog thing, and if the analog value is above certain threshold, they just flip the switch. That's majority of the project which are doing. I think, does it work? Yeah, it can work, but how does it know it's a clap sound or somebody speaking nearby or it's some music or it's a sh shut, bend the door, all kind of things. How does it differentiate? I think from the code it doesn't, right? So I think further. There's a very nice YouTube video by this guy called Great Scott. He did a better version of this one. He demand two clap sounds to activate something. So, so that kind of uh, minimize uh, false positives a lot because you have to clap twice. And uh, I, I still don't feel it's a very nice uh, solution because I have to clap twice. It sounds, I feel a bit weird. Then I did even more. There's really there's some academic paper, although it's published by some students. And they introduced several algorithms so, uh, based on the same principle that they do, uh, they capture all the sound samples like this, and then they, they do a long-term and short-term averaging for the sound sample and detect this uh, <coughs> energy level. And then they kind of uh, calculate the ratio between the short-term energy versus the long-term energy, and they give this graph, and they determine some of the threshold, and say, above certain level, this is a clap sound, because it is kind of a bursting sound over a quieter background. So I think, yeah, this might work. This sounds reasonable. So I try to implement this one. but. The first question is, how do I de decide this strategy? Do I need to collect a lot, lot of samples and uh, do my own testing? And uh, whether this strategy is actually applicable to other environments, I have no guarantee. So, and meanwhile, actually, I'm taking a deep learning course. So this, this may be the second month I'm into the course. So uh, what they teach a lot in the deep learning course is that what you can do for a classifier, you just pump all the data in and uh, let the neural network to decide by itself whether it is a clap or it's not. So I think, yeah, this is a good choice. So, and obviously I can capture the sound samples and feed in new neural network, let it train. Maybe I can train on a PC instead of on a microcontroller. But soon I found it is not really 
doable on a microcontroller like uh, Arduino because for a uh, clacking sound, I, I need to capture data for 200 microseconds. Within these 200 microseconds, I can actually have a 7.6 kilo of samples. And Arduino definitely doesn't have, doesn't have memory to store these samples as well as send these samples to PC. Within 200 milliseconds, is almost not possible. And even if it's possible, doing, taking the 7.6 samples and do calculation, do a forward calculation, all the floating point mass are uh, you know, also not possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I give up this idea. Maybe I can use, actually I can use uh, Cortex M4F. Maybe it is possible, but I still want to stick to Arduino. So the second idea is I need to extract some features to represent the clapping sound. Then I can take the features I train on PC, then after train, I get the, all the network details into Arduino code and do the prediction and the forward calculation. That should be doable. So now the question is, uh, where are the features? So I look some more. So these are the features I chose. The first one is so-called a cross-zero uh, rate. Uh, the, on the top screen is actually a clapping sound, and the, and the button is something dropped onto the table. So what we can see is uh, for the clapping sound, they're giving the same period of time, then the, there's a lot of uh, vibrations, whereby, whereby by other sounds like voices, music, you have very little. Uh, usually this is uh, in the, uh, most of the people giving this term called cross zero instead of, actually it looks like frequency, but actually because this is not a fixed frequency, so most of the people are using the name called cross zero rate. So what I choose is, uh, the feature is I calculate the time used for the first 50 cross zero detected. So the less time, that means the more cross zero you have, uh, you have encountered. So this is one of the features. However, giving this feature only is not enough because if somebody play a high pitch sound, then it will be detected as a clap as well. So the second, I do some more captures. So, so on, the, on the top row, I actually the clapping sound, different kind of clap, and the, on the bottom row, as a speech, something drop, or the some singing sound. Uh, the blue color line actually is the capture window. This is 200 milliseconds. Uh, what we can actually see is. Uh, there's always a decay for the clapping sound, whereas for other things, they may not have a decay. Although for this object job, there's a, there's a decay observed, but just in by, by the uh, cortex zero rate pre as previously, actually we, can, we are able to differentiate it. So that, how do I take this decay shape and write this into a feature? So what I did is actually I get the 200 milliseconds of time, I, separate, I split them into 10 different segments and I calculate the uh, energy for each segment. And I hope all these uh, features <coughs> together I feed into a neural, ne neural network, it, it, it can actually give me a, it try to figure out it is uh, it's decay or it is flat or something like that. So given all these features, actually I have 12 features, one is uh, cross zero, and the 10 being the energy level for the 20 milliseconds each, and uh, another one is a pre-trigger, which means what is the background sound before I encounter uh, the first high samples. So I feed into this uh, in a network and just do the other trainings. So some of the details is the, the feature collection on Arduino, and uh, actually ADC setting is uh, 38.5 kilo sample per second, which is not the Arduino default uh, sample rate, so uh, I need to do some of the, write some of the registers to override all these things. And uh, I, I tried different configurations of uh, network and found just a small two layer actually doing quite well. The accuracy is actually quite high, 96%, although I have very limited uh, samples. And uh, yeah, the, the, the training code actually is from this, uh, this course. I'm not sure whether I can publish this. But because it is a training code, it is everything written by hand. So if, I, if I'm doing by now, I would, I, I would be using like uh, TensorFlow to do this. Because I, I just take this course last week. <laughs> this was done um, one week ago, uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> so OK, and uh, some of the details about this. To, to do this calculation on uh, Arduino, it takes 20 milliseconds. 
So 200 milliseconds of uh, sampling plus 20 milliseconds to do to, to decision. The actual response is like 220 milliseconds later, but actually the response is quite okay for a human to, uh, to feel. <coughs> so some conclusion, future work. First one, neural network is definitely the best friend for lazy engineers. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, I maybe I need to do, I, I, I will <coughs> fall into the pit of do FFT on the signal, getting out the frequency components and fit the exponential decay, all this kind of thing. But with the neural network, everything is just done by mathematics. Uh, I don't need to do any real hard work on that. And uh, I'm just an absolute beginner, it's two months only, so yeah, this is by no means a complete project. I, I need a, a lot more samples, I need a, a lot of features. Maybe these features are not enough, maybe I need more. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of false positives, especially when I play the Empower uh, from the speaker to the microphone, it gives a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> false positives because these people like to, they, 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 they will keep silent for a while and then suddenly speak to ha, ah, whatever, then it triggers. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so a little bit demo, I'm not sure because the environment is a little bit different. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, how, how do I, how do I show this? Okay. You treat it on your own hands, right? Yeah, it's treated on my hands, so everybody's uh, collecting is a little bit different. Okay, so these are the data. It's keep collecting. Uh, the first one being the cross zero. So, so uh, doing here is okay. But definitely, I talk to it, it's very hard to activate. <laughs> So, okay, that's, a, that, that's finished. <laughs> yeah. Do you have um, <coughs> uh, um, a, what's it turns on? Does it refuse anything for a set amount of time afterwards? Yeah, yes. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it kind of, it reject for like 20 milliseconds or more, t several seconds is just a uh, silent time. Otherwise, it kind of, uh, you, you keep clapping, it will keep 10. With the ESP32, you should be able to actually get much more. Yeah. yeah. It, it definitely, it is a much, much faster processor. Uh, for our yeah, 8-bit to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true, also. <laughs> yeah, with FPG, because for, for the, I can show a bit of the Arduino code, it's damn ugly, and uh, it is full of, uh, Parameters for the uh, neural network and the uh, everything is calculated by. Okay, it is actually from the training. So I have this uh, these samples. These are the samples. This is uh, this in te test sample. Ah, uh, these are testing samples, which I collected. So I can do a training here. Uh, it's a Python code. Uh, it start to do some training. What? Today is so slow. Okay, yeah. Yes. So this is the last function after several iterators. Iterations, that's then these are, the, these are the parameters oh, wow. again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I just uh, taking this output and uh, copy paste into the Arduino code. Uh, it just works. I've got two remarks. There's someone in Finland called Visa Bayamak who actually model hand clap because they, they synthesize the uh, crowds uh, constantly. So that, that would be something you can. And Google has a, a lot of more database with sound. So maybe part of it actually has hand clap. Can 
so you, you don't even bother clapping or you just push a button. <laughs> Uh, the, the idea is I don't want a button in the pocket <laughs> and uh, I erroneously set my switch just below the light where I need to turn on the switch five meters away. <laughs> that is all the motivation of doing this. <laughs> <laughs>